Rating, plus 136 plus X. Item hash, SCP-1284. Object class, Euclid. Special, containment procedures, SCP-1284-1. Currently SCP-1284-18 is to be contained in standard-sized humanoid living quarters at Bio Research Area 12, fitted with grow lamps that cover a sun-equivalent light spectrum in addition to normal lighting. Fixtures. There are to be no windows in its living space. And, should a situation arise where SCP-1284-1 must be moved through or into any space with windows, those windows must be completely blacked out by any means available. Under no circumstances is SCP-1284-1 to be exposed to direct moonlight, as defined as a direct line of sight between any part of SCP-1284-1's body and an illuminated portion of the moon. Under normal circumstances, SCP-1284-1 is to be kept on a vegetarian diet, given three meals per day, and may request one snack between meals. Following an SCP-1284-2 formation event, SCP-1284-1 is to be fed Formula 1284A by nasogastric feeding tube and exposed to A sunlight equivalent light spectrum for 15 minutes out of every hour until it has fully regenerated all four limbs and is capable of self-locomotion. There is to be at least one nurse on call at all times to help SCP-1284-1 relocate its shoulders and or hips should they become dislocated outside of an SCP-1284-2 formation event. SCP-1284-1 is to be kept on hormonal treatments to delay the onset of puberty as long as possible, and tranquilizers to reduce the likelihood of an SCP-1284-2 formation event. Blood samples are to be taken at random intervals no longer than one month and no shorter than five days, tested for hormone levels and SCP-1284-1's medication dosage adjusted accordingly. A psychological evaluation is to be performed bi-weekly. Once hormone treatments have begun, SCP-1284-1 is to be kept on continuous suicide watch. Any media SCP-1284-1 is exposed to must be pre-screened to ensure that it does not contain any objects animals, or depictions thereof found listed on documents 1284-06 A or B-8. Should SCP-1284-1 expire for any reason, Protocol 1284 Alpha is to be executed immediately to identify the new SCP-1284-1 and pull it from the general population, outside of testing. All instances of SCP-1284-2 are to be destroyed via exposure to sun-equivalent light spectrum. The remaining cell slurry is non-anomalous, and may be disposed of in whatever manner is most expedient. Description SCP-1284-1 is a series of pre-monarchal female humans that have undergone severe, permanent, and apparently spontaneous alteration in physiology and psychology. Only one living instance of SCP-1284-1 has ever been located at one time, but the global nature of the anomaly makes definite confirmation impractical. All instances of SCP-1284-1 can be considered to suffer from a unique psychosis, fully described in Document 128401A. SCP-1284-1 has smaller than normal ball heads in its hip and shoulder joints, allowing them to luxate easily. But a positive identification requires confirmation of sphincters in the surrounding blood vessels, or direct observation of an SCP-1284-2 formation event. SCP-1284-1 does not, and possibly cannot, respond to either its designation or its birth name. 
but will answer to any fair approximation of Moon's Bride in apparently any language, even if it has no knowledge the language in question. 1. At sundown local time during a full moon, when SCP-1284-1 is under high stress, or when SCP-1284-1 is exposed to direct moonlight, see above, one or more of its limbs will dislocate out of its ball joints, and sphincters in the surrounding blood vessels will close. This provokes the onset of apoptosis of tissues distal to the closed sphincters, followed by immediate detachment of the afflicted limb. Over the course of approximately 5 seconds, a new SCP-1284-2 instance will assemble itself from each shed limb. Instances of SCP-1284-2 are carnivorous, quadrupedal masses of flesh with rudimentary mouths and teeth. When viewed directly, instances of SCP-1284-2 give the visual illusion of being domesticated rabbits. But in direct viewing, such as in a mirror or via video feed, or tactile examination reveals that they are in fact hairless and mostly skinless, as well as lacking a distinct head, tail, or discernible sensory organs. SCP-1284-2 instances will invariably attack and attempt to consume any living being other than SCP-1284-1 or other SCP-1284-2 instances that they have an unobstructed path to, 2 as it consumes tissue. An SCP-1284-2 instance incorporates it into its own mass, increasing in size until it reaches a total weight of 6, 2 kilograms. At that point, it will begin to rapidly reorganize its constituent tissue, and over a period of 7 seconds, split into 2, 3, 1 kg instances of SCP-1284-2. 1 out of every 8 instances of SCP-1284-2 formed in this way will attempt to path its way back to SCP-1284-1 and feed itself piecemeal to SCP-1284-1, even when instructed to the contrary. SCP-1284-1 will invariably cooperate to the best of its ability with SCP-1284-2 as attempts to feed it. Imaging tests have indicated that SCP-1284-1 as stomach becomes internally larger as needed to accommodate tissue from SCP-1284-2 without changing in external measurements. If exposed to a sunlight equivalent light spectrum, SCP-1284-2 instances spontaneously undergo liquefaction, and SCP-1284-1 will begin to regenerate lost limbs at a rate of 0. 2 kg an hour if it has consumed enough biomass to do so. While SCP-1284-1 as limb regeneration has not been observed to violate conservation of mass, the replacement cells form spontaneously, rather than being divided from existing cells by mitosis. Menarche has been invariably fatal to instances of SCP-1284-1, resulting in continuous, rapid hemorrhaging of the endometrium until death by exsanguination. Attempts to stop or slow the bleeding have to date all been unsuccessful due to anomalous, drastic increases in blood pressure and spontaneous thrombolysis. SCP-1284-1 instances indicate awareness that this will occur, with expressed feelings about it varying from slight nervousness to eager anticipation. SCP-1284-1 instances are actively and cooperative with Foundation attempts to delay or prevent menarche. In the event of the current SCP-1284-1 instance expiring, a female child between the ages of 2 and 5 living in a rural community of less than 1,000 people becomes a new instance of SCP-1284-1 and will begin to exhibit SCP-1284-1's abnormal behaviors. 3. The current instance of SCP-1284-1, 
SCP-1284-18 is a human female of Indian descent. Years old as of, it invariably introduces itself as Kandrani. Contrary to its birth certificate, which indicates its given name is SCP-1284-18 suffers from an additional psychosis similar to depersonalization disorder without successful reality testing, ultimately forming a personal narrative in which unpleasant events and stimuli are derealized entirely. Although this disturbance is not standard amongst SCP-1284-1 instances and is not considered anomalous at this time, Staff interacting with SCP-1284-18 are to be discouraged from challenging this narrative. Addendum. Transcript of interview attached. Interviewed. SCP-1284-1 over 1. Interviewer. Dr. Forward. First attempt to obtain information from SCP-1284-1 regarding the nature of SCP-1284-2. Translated from German, note that SCP-1284-1 is, at the time of this interview, six years old, less than begin log greater than. Doctor, what do you know about SCP-1284-2? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Tilts head to side. What? Doctor, what do you know about the rabbits that appeared earlier? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Writes head. Oh. Smiles. You mean my king's subjects? Doctor. Hesitates. Dot dot dot. Yes. Could you describe what they were doing? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Still smiling. My king ordered that they hold a feast in my honor. Doctor. I see. What was the occasion? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Frowns. Tilts head. I don't know what you mean. Doctor. Why did your king order them to hold a feast? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Writes head. It is his right. Doctor. That doesn't really answer my question. SCP-1284-1 over 1. It is his right. Doctor. Is there a reason he wanted them to hold a feast in your honor specifically? SCP-1284-1 over 1. I am his bride, although our marriage is yet to be consummated. Doctor. Shifts uncomfortably. Dot dot dot. Right. Can you tell me more about your king? SCP-1284-1 over 1. Looks down. Extended pause. Looks back up. He is my king. Less than and log greater than. Closing statement. This line of inquiry did not reveal further information. Addendum. Attempt to prevent menarche through surgical removal of SCP-1284-1 as uterus and ovaries failed. Subject regenerated organs in the same manner as limbs. Second attempt denied approval. Addendum. Attempt to prevent menarche through malnourishment of SCP-1284-1 failed. Subject experienced menarche despite condition and expired at age 12. Addendum. Attempt to prevent menarche through hormonal treatment of SCP-1284-1 quarter failed. Subject experienced menarche and expired at age 12. Post-mortem testing indicates that subject's hormone levels were corrected to with unexpected and medicated levels by unknown method. Addendum. Attempt to prevent menarche through hormonal treatment and regular blood monitoring of SCP-1284-1 fifth failed. Subject unexpectedly experienced menarche and expired at age 13. Blood sample taken during menarche indicated correction of hormone levels inconsistent with previous tests. Addendum. Hormonal treatment not started on SCP-1284-1 sixth. Subject was suffering from severe pneumonia as a complication of a measles infection when initially secured, and, despite the best efforts of Foundation and local medical personnel, Expired 35 hours later at age 4. Addendum. 
blood sample taken from SCP-1284-17, 24 hours ahead of the regular sampling schedule indicated a higher rate of hormone correction than previous tests had indicated. Preliminary randomization of sampling schedule approved. Addendum. Transcript of interview attached. Interviewed. SCP-1284-17. Interviewer. Doctor. Forward. Excerpt from psychological assessment after SCP-1284-17 began exhibiting signs of depression and resistance to taking medication. Translated from Mandarin. Note that SCP-1284-1 is, at the time of this interview, 14 years old, less than begin log greater than. Doctor, can you describe to me why you feel this way? SCP-1284-1 7th. You are denying my king his right. Doctor, how so? SCP-1284-1 7th. We were meant to consummate our marriage. But you prevented it, doctor. And how did we do that? SCP-1284-17. Your pills, doctor. If we didn't give you those pills, you would bleed to death. SCP-1284-17. It is his right. Less than and law greater than. Addendum. Attempt to prevent menarche through hormonal treatment and irregular blood monitoring of SCP-1284-1 7th successful. Subject punctured own carotid artery with pen and expired at age 16. Footnotes. 1. For full list of languages tested so far. See document 1284-05A. For full list of confirmed working appellations. See document 1284-05B. For partial list of confirmed non-working appellations. See document 1284-05C. To suggest a language or appellation for testing, contact Dr. Stoker during office hours. As of incident 1284-15009, testing with non-natural, invented, languages must be signed off by SCP-1284-1, S. Psychologist and at least two linguists of level 3. Clearance or above familiar with SCP-1284-1 S circumstances. 2. SCP-1284-2 S pathing abilities are incompletely understood, but do not appear to be based on smell, line of sight, echolocation, electrical signals, or the detection of vibration. If presented with a maze in two possible targets, one physically closer but with a longer required path and the other physically farther away but with a shorter required path. SCP-1284-2 instances will invariably navigate the maze to the target at the end of the short path. With no wrong turns, the possible use of SCP-1284-2 in locating lost operatives in spatially inconsistent locations is being looked into. 3. See document 1284-01A for full behavioral profile. 